Executives behind the online video platform Rumble threw their hat into the Rogan ring yesterday, inviting the podcast host to move the Joe Rogan experience onto Rumble and even offering to match Rogan's current lucrative multi-million dollar deal with Spotify. CEO Chris Pavlovsky wrote to Rogan, quote, we stand with you, your guests, and your legion of fans in desire for real conversation. How about you bring all your shows to Rumble, both old and new, with no censorship for 100 million bucks over four years? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I doubt he can get out of that Spotify contract, but if he could, uh, you know, maybe he would take it. Maybe he would I go guess. To Don't you find this a little bit of, like, clout chasing, right? Like, oh, I mean, one, say, a, like, a thousand percent, uh, but... Joe yeah. Rogan, you're just the greatest. Come come host your show at Rising at the Hill. We'll give you a gazillion dollars. It'll be great. Come on. Do you know what I mean? It, it That's does, what it sounds like. It's, yeah. it's useful in a sense that it, it helps me make the point that I've been trying to make to the left, which is that you, you're not going to get rid of Rogan. Right. Like he's not going right. anywhere. Like that's, that's not the world that you live in. You can't even take away his $100 million. Because right. if you succeeded in getting Spotify to break the contract, they'd probably owe him a substantial portion of what's left on that $100 million. Then he gets another $100 million from Rumble. So congratulations, you played yourself. He now has $200 yeah. million. Then he gets our $100 million when it comes he gets to joining Rising. Million. And then the 11 million <laughs> listeners on Spotify, yeah. instead of having their second listen be This American Life and The, and the Daily, they move over to Rumble. And now right. you're building out a right-wing ecosystem, which is also well, counterproductive. Totally Stop. Right -wing. It is. It, I, I mean, mean, it's fine. I'm like, on it's it is unfortunate that free speech is now being associated with right wing. That's that's well, awful. That's it's true, a terrible right? development yeah. for the left for that to be the case. For the, the left, left yeah, it is. has been the champions of free speech over the past. 100, 200 years. Oh, yeah, did you guys see that? Uh, this, is, this was going around a lot on Twitter yesterday about the Rogan stuff. It's some tweet from, I don't even know who this is, Matthew Sheffield. And he was saying oh, Rogan, all of Rogan's guests are right wing. Like this, um, can we maybe oh, yeah. can we put that? I don't know if we can get we the can tweet add up. That post, yeah. Um, but he's like listing the guests <coughs> by right wing bias. And the right wing, like, Included in the right wing category are people that are just like that are not right wing. Like in any, like Stephen well, Pinker not is not right wing. Right. Uh, the New York Times guy. Yeah, like he, the science it, guy. Yeah, um, you the know, Barry, dude. Yeah, yeah. Right. They were Barry trying Weiss to show that is, Rogan. I guess, right wing on the narrow question of like right free speech, cancel culture, etc. Israel Palestine, but, and but Israel otherwise, Palestine, just but, a but, normie liberal. So they're just yeah. classifying as right wing. Like, if this is right wing, then 98% of the country is right wing. And we live well, in a country that, that is 98% right wing. Right. If everyone to you know the to. I don't know, to who's in the, the left category. Well, when they Dan Savage, that, yeah, but, Crystal Ball, But look at that left Tommy list Tong. <laughs> when they were actually doing the list. And they're trying to just make the point that Rogan, he platforms all of these right-wingers rather than left-wingers. And, and to the, your point, Robbie, that plenty of people on, when I counted on the right-wing list, there was at least 10 or 12 that are actually left-wing people. I mean, they had like the Weinstein brothers, they had Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, people that were, you know, that are like out and about Democrats and have been. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one name that they left off of the left, left list, Bernie Sanders, He's, he didn't even make the left list. <laughs> so they're clearly making the list in a way where, you know, they're they trying to They put him on the right-wing list. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. yeah, Bernie's on the right. Pro no, no, again, according to this list. understanding of what right-wing is, Bernie Sanders is part of the 98% of America that's right-wing, probably. But also, you know, it, and to what Ryan was just saying is that when, you know, I, I know this experience from just being booked on Tim Pool's show is that they've talked to me several times about how they've been unable, they've, they've invited left-wing guests on the show. A lot of left-wing guests say no, that they don't want to legitimize the show. They don't want to have the conversation. Right. And so Rogan, I'm sure, gets that same sort of experience where he's able to have more open, free conversations and willing participants coming more from the right, which is also, you know, like you said, Ryan, it's a it's a negative thing for the left when they have just completely shunned free speech and they instead say, I won't platform, I won't talk to so and so, uh, you know, I won't go on their show. And right. so yeah, you know, people, what is right, supposed exactly. to do? People are discouraged on on the left side from going on to Rogan's show. The people who do go on catch a bunch of flack for it. Uh, like whether whether you're Sanders or Crystal Ball yeah. or whoever, yeah, and right. and so then you can't follow it up by saying, oh well, clearly here's evidence of of, of the right wing tilt because right wing pe there's more right wing people that have gone on than left wing right. people when you 
are the ones who are discouraging left-wing people from going right. onto the show also, in the, the first place. The what is so even, confusing about this? This list wasn't everyone. There are also just like lots of people he has on that are not particularly ideological, right? right? That are most just of the media, right. right? Most of it. Uh, former presidential candidate Andrew Yang came to Rogan's defense on Sunday night, defending him against accusations of racism in a now-deleted tweet saying, quote, I don't think Joe Rogan is a racist. The man interacts with and works with black people literally all the time. However, after facing backlash, Yang deleted the tweet, offered up an apology in a new thread where he called his original statement, quote, wrong-headed and said, racism is real, deep, corrosive, even lethal. I know that. I made a mistake in an earlier tweet tonight that downplayed these realities. I, I guess what, the controversy is, right, you could know and work with black people and still be racist or yeah, it's a, it's, sure. Right, it's it, not it's a, a to... that's a dumb, and it's also, it's not necessarily for Andrew Yang to, ex to accept an apology for uh, an allegation of uh, anti-black racism. That's not for Yang to no. accept. Like, well, we he, talked can about he, knows, he can say he knows the guy that's doesn't fine. think that's, he's so, that's, that's totally fine, he can, he yeah. can say that. The, the, actually, I think the person who put it correctly uh, was Rogan, and he said, anytime you're apologizing uh, for racism, you screwed up, and I screwed up. Like, right. if you're in that situation, you did something wrong, and that's genuinely reflective, because you can, a lot of people- You're supposed to apologize for not disclosing a consensual right. affair <laughs> right. at your workplace, right? The, the, yeah. I'm referring to the Zucker thing. Right. He apologizes yeah. for the not bad thing. Right, and so a lot of people, when they get hung up in, that, in a situation like that, uh, will rationalize their way out of it, and and they'll and they can point to all sorts of things that explain why it is that they're not wrong. But the fact that you're getting that allegation means that you screwed up. And and Rogan is he was he was 100 percent right about that, and good good for him for just saying that. Like I I'm apologizing for this, therefore I screwed up. We the thing about Yang, though, and his uh, his his what he the statement he made, and people saying, "Oh, how to, you know, okay, just because you work with black people, or you talk to black people, or hang out with them, doesn't mean you're not a racist." But I do want to point out that that's his worldview, because for someone apparently for Yang, if he were a racist, you know, in his mind, he would not associate. That's what racism means for him. Um, and, and there is two different types of people. There's the one type that says. I'm racist, and I and that means I'm not going to hang out with, associate, marry, befriend, work with people of this whatever they're racist, whoever they're racist against. And then there's the other group who says I might think they're lesser than me, but I'm willing to work with them. I'm willing to be be friends with them, but I still think they're lesser than me type of racist. So I feel like when Yang made that statement that he got a, ba a lot of backlash on. That's his worldview. If he was a racist, he wouldn't be around these people. He'd be like disassociating. And a lot of people are like that if they were racist. So, you know, in his defense on that, it's just a matter of perspective, a difference in how a person operates if they were to take a certain feeling in their mind or, you know, how they would behave if they had a certain feeling. Everybody's a bit different. So I think he was just speaking from his own personal how he would behave. Uh, and he's like, I wouldn't, you know, so he's therefore not because look. So. Yeah, and I, and I think in general, Rogan just has kind of the default politics that tens of millions of people have in this country that don't consider themselves right wing. I would say that there's their right wing kind of populist tendencies embedded in those pop politics, but also some left wing politics embedded in there, too. That that is the, the mishmash, the jumbled, scattered politics of uh, of a very normal uh, working class, black, white, brown American like that. It, that's. And if, and if Democrats and the left can't find a way of identifying with that kind of default position and moving it, it toward their direction, what hope is there in, a, in the country that is dominated by that political view? Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's a very weird framing to want to be in a camp where you're just, just the uber minority, you're the super, super left by yourself and everyone else is all right wing and you're just, you no, you're just going to lose. Like it's a losing kind of framing. So, yeah. interesting. Yeah, you just to don't see it. don't at that point. You just don't care about the consequences of policy. All, mm -hmm. all that matters to you is how you feel about. Right. Well, you're right. Then you're forfeiting the outcome of policies because you're going to lose politically. Guess who suffers? Yeah. Right. Well, we'll be back with more rising in just a minute. Stay with us.